to introduce. Or we're yes. here with uh, Dr. Uh, Eugenio Singolani from Cedar Sinai in Los Angeles, who just gave wonderful grand rounds at the Methodist Aviki Heart and Vascular Center, and he spoke about biological pacemakers. So um, part of it is, is questions that we have already asked and answered, but uh, just to reiterate, um, it's quite fascinating that you can reproduce uh, natural uh, beating of the heart after a bleeding DAV node with this, either with uh, cell engineering or with, with uh, somatic reprogramming. Which one do you think is going to be more promising um, as a clinically useful strategy? Well, I think uh, uh, cell-mediated uh, systems uh, have uh, some uh, issues to translate to the clinic. Uh, uh, number one, uh, to be able to deliver a clump of cells that is sufficient to pace the heart would be difficult by a minimal invasive system. Mm -hmm. uh, also, cells are immature and there are potential tumor chains. So I do think that either functional re-engineering by overexpressing an ion channel or somatic reprogramming, which uh, induces uh, many changes, as we discussed before, hmm. would be the preferred strategy for the, for the clinic or for translation. Well, I, I find it particularly attractive with uh, somatic cell reprogramming that you not just express a gene, but what matters is not the gene itself, but the morphological changes and functional changes that follow. Um, do you think that's going to be more robust in terms of durability and, and, and reliability of the pacemaking activity? Yeah, I do, I do think that, the, uh, as you know, that the sinus node is a very uh, complex structure. Uh, somatic reprogramming uh, won't be able to achieve all the features of the sinus node, mm -hmm. but by the fact that you are modifying multiple ionic currents, the morphology of the cells, and the connexins or gap junctions, uh, I do think that it's going to be more durable and more robust comparing to ion channels only, yeah. But the, the technical challenge remains that the cells that you do somatic reprogramming on, they still retain uh, immunogenicity, right? They right. still right. could be in targeted. The, in the present delivery system that I, we talk about today, it's an adenoviral-based system, which is known to have transient expression of the transgene. Even if you achieve permanent reprogramming of a cell by the gene itself, the cells will have epitopes of the adenoviral system. They're going to be recognized by the uh, immune system and clear out. Uh, to be able to have permanent reprogramming, you either have to have uh, other virals, virus, for example, AAV or adeno-associated virus, mm -hmm. lentivirus, or a non-viral delivery uh, that we are working uh, right now in proof of concept experiments. Yeah. And I wanted to discuss uh, perhaps a non-scientific question, but a, but a very relevant issue for physician scientists that are aspiring physician scientists or physician scientists that are wannabe physician scientists uh, or frustrated physician scientists. Can you, can you uh, elaborate on the challenges you face as a, as a person who tries to combine the clinic uh, with a procedural subspecialty, which is demanding, it's not just outpatient uh, clinics, but procedural subspecialty clinical activity with uh, basic and translational research that is pretty demanding uh, technically as well. Yeah, so I think it's, uh, I think that's a great point and, and uh, it's, uh, the days are definitely long and there's, uh, there's need for institutional support to especially for, for young physician scientists that they want to come out from training and do science and clinical medicine. It's very important to have very good institutional support and protected time to be able to do your research. And by protected time, I not only mean protected time for yourself, but to have some personnel that's going to help you to continue to do science while you're doing your procedure seeing your patients. Mm. Otherwise, it's very uh, difficult to be able to carry on a science project when you have multiple interruptions in the middle. Yeah, this is a, a ubiquitous struggle. Um, in terms of uh, the, the most challenging aspect of science these days is, is what the NIH called the F word, uh, funding. Um, how do you think it's, it's necessary for institutions to require, require uh, enough clinical activity so that you can support yourself? Um, do you ever see a scenario where you, you have a deal with the institution where you say, okay, I'm going to bring this amount of clinical money out of my procedures. In exchange, I want uh, 
support. It's something that I, I'm not being very, very specific about my question, but um, something that we struggle here figuring out what do you, what does the institution care more about them, the RVUs or the scientific production? No, I think that's that's a that's a, a uh, that's a very important point, and and usually uh, my experience is that uh, they kind of run parallel. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have the part, the clinical part of the institution, and the academic scientific part that runs parallel. Uh, in uh, my institution, we have a pretty uh, uh, unique scenario where they really. Uh, 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 protect, uh, you know, time of certain people to do this type of projects, mm. uh, but uh, but I think it's uh, it's uh, it's I think that could be a good system uh, where yeah. if you are productive enough, you can have protected time from 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 that because as you know, NIH funding uh, is getting more difficult, especially for translational projects. Yeah, and there's been multiple articles written about that about the famous Valley of Death, where where preclinical studies they go nowhere when we get to the translational phase. NIH feels that this is already for product development and they don't want to fund that. And you're not ready enough to, a, a, to a company or venture yeah. capitalist to put their money because they don't feel safe. So even though the mission uh, is said to be to translate uh, 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 basic research to uh, improve patient care, sometimes it's a little bit difficult when you're stuck in the middle with a translational project where all the proof of concept and the mechanistics studies are made, but mm -hmm. you really want to translate that to, to okay, clinical yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Dr. Singlani, thank you very much for coming and joining us today. It's been a wonderful experience, and I hope uh, we have more to show you and more to enjoy of you in the next few hours. Well, thank you very much. It's my thank pleasure. You. Thank you.